There is one specific area of expense that we all are required to have that really can be sneaky and cost us a lot of money. And one of those things that we can do good this week, but next week, ooh, I went way over in budget. That area is food. We all have to eat, right? Well, the costs are crazy. We know that. But you will hear many people say these days, well, it is what it is. There's no way to get past it. It's just a ton of money to go to the grocery store and get food. So there you go. I disagree. I still think that you can strategically plan. There are things that you can think about and do during the week and during the time you're going to the store that can specifically still save you money. Sure, it probably won't save you as much as it did four years ago, but it's still a significant savings that most people just don't take the time to look into. So in this video, I'm going to tell you 25 plus, there's more than 25 of them, great ways to save on food. Remember that everybody's situation is completely different. The members that are in their household, the amount of them, where they are in their life. So just because one or more of these tips don't work for you in particular, that's okay. That just means that it's not for you. It may be great for somebody else. So just listen to this list, have a piece of paper or your notes app out on your phone. And when you hear one that you want to think more about or identify, or maybe go ahead and put into place, then jot that down and then resume the video. Now let's get into, in no particular order, these tips. Number one, I'm going to start off with what happens in my house. I will go every Saturday morning and start writing out my grocery list and I'll say to my husband, hey, anything that we need that we're out of, can you help me think of it? Because my brain's overworking right now. I'm trying to you know, make sure I write everything down and he goes, yeah, purple bag Doritos. Mm, not so much. There is something called a reverse shopping list or you could call it a master grocery list. This is where you kind of do things in reverse, where you're the type of person, you get the same cereals every week, the same cream cheese and bagels, the same peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, the same vegetables, the same uh, fruits, the same frozen items. You know what you use throughout the week regularly. Well, put those items down on a list, the items that you know you need in your pantry to do your cooking for the week. And you have that list, you only have to create it once. And what you do is when you go through the week, as you run out of an item, or you see something spoiled, or you see that you're getting low on an item, you're going to check that off or highlight it. That way, when you go to the day that you go grocery shopping, it's a reverse list you actually just see the things that you need to fill up your pantry. This is your pantry plan and you need to stock up on these 10 to 15 items. This is an absolute great way to save money. And if all the other meal planning options and planning options haven't worked for you in the past, this definitely is one to give a try. Number two is another one that I want you to kind of reverse and start looking at it a different way. And it's to rethink what dinner is. And no, I'm not necessarily talking about breakfast for dinner every single night, but I'm talking about, you know, I go back to the movie, A Christmas Story. If you've seen A Christmas Story, make sure you click on that like button down below because it's just a classic. You know, they run it for 24 hours during Christmas. But I think about the meal when the mom's in there cooking. And I feel like she's always in there cooking. You got the meatloaf, the mashed potatoes. Remember Ralphie? It wasn't Ralphie. Whatever his, his brother's name was, shoving the potatoes because he wouldn't eat them. He was meatloaf, meatloaf. But all of these things, we think of dinner as a meat, a vegetable, a starch, and all these things take different preparation times, different pots and pans, and it's a big orchestrated meal because that's what dinner is supposed to be. Especially during the week or the times when maybe everybody's running around and it's late, rethink what that dinner is. Dinner doesn't have to look like that all the time. Sure, that is a great treat to have especially at the weekends when you have more time to cook. But if you don't, rethink it. Dinner can be sandwiches where everybody picks their topping and some chips as a side. Or it can be a big, nice salad. Or yeah, you can even do that breakfast for dinner. I mean, who doesn't like pancakes and eggs? It's delicious and families enjoy it. Number three is to find a blogger that specifically 
blogs about the specials at your particular grocery store. They are out there. When I found HarrisTeeterDeals.com, I was ecstatic. Harris Teeter is a local grocery store that we do go to because maybe Aldi or somewhere else doesn't have the specialty items that they may have. They may have better fruits and vegetables at that time. But and we go there and it can be fairly expensive. And throughout the week, really, I don't have the time to sit and browse through the circular and then match the circular up to whatever coupon could be or determine if something that is on sale is really a sale or they're just trying to you know go around and jack up the price and then bring it back down bloggers like this know those stores they do the work for you so i easily just go on to the Harris Teeter website, I will look at their weekly ad and then I'll compare it to HarrisTeeterDeals.com. I will go through there and she'll say, this is a great deal. Make sure you stop on, stock up on this. If you get this, buy one, get one, and you add this coupon that's on the store app, it comes down to X amount per unit. It is fantastic. So go to see if you can find somebody who has that type of a blog for the particular grocery store that you use in your area. They have already done the time, the work. So why don't you save the time and their blogs are part income for them. So viewing their blog is also extremely helpful for that blogger. Number four is one I know you've heard before. I know I've said it. I'm going to say it again because people still just won't, you know, branch out and try it. But it's buying generic, buying store brand items and testing them out. They can be 20 to 25% lower in cost than a name brand. And oftentimes the name brand when it's on deep discount or a sale or buy one, get one is still a higher unit cost than the store brand. And for those people who, you know, for me, I was raised on whatever was cheapest. So I don't have a palette that knows the specific difference in this mayonnaise versus this mayonnaise. That's for certain. But there are so many people that get st st stuck. L I get stuck on words sometimes. They get stuck on words like taste. Guess what? Sometimes taste might not be within your budget. If you keep going over budget in your grocery store items that you're getting, maybe you might have to try the off brand. Number five is to stretch your food. And what I mean in particular for this one, I'm gonna give you some examples, is when you have to buy a certain ingredient but you have to purchase it and the amount in that package is more than you need for that meal. So for instance, we love this uh, dish that I found on Pinterest called veggie lo mein. It's absolutely delicious and it calls for carrots. Well, I'm not gonna spend money to buy individual organic carrots. I will buy the regular carrots in the bag. Well, the bag comes with mm, how many, about eight or nine carrots, and I only need two carrots for this meal. So what I then do when I'm planning out that week is I'll plan another meal where I utilize the rest of those carrots. Maybe we are doing a dinner where we're doing sandwiches, so I'll cut them up and make carrot sticks to have with it. Or maybe there's, a, and then there's another night where we're having a, a side dish where I can make um, what we call candied carrots, where we slice them up, we put them with a little, I think it's honey, butter, and sugar, and we put them in the oven. That way I've got carrots three different ways during three different meals and I've strategically bought this one thing I needed for the meal that I really wanted and I've continued to use it through the week. Same thing when you go and buy a roast chicken and oftentimes, here's another ch tip, roast chickens are what people call loss leaders and if you're not sure what that is, it's where they don't make a lot of money on, on them the store doesn't, but they know you're gonna come in the store to get that chicken and probably chances are you're gonna buy a couple of dishes to go with it on your way out because it's easy, it's delicious. So the loss leader is that they don't make any money necessarily on that roast chicken, but they get you in for other reasons. So my point is they, you can get that roast chicken already cooked for less than it would probably cost you to buy a chicken and do it all yourself. So you take that roast chicken and again, stretch it. You're gonna use part of the chicken and eat it with a meal, maybe that side of carrots, maybe some mashed potatoes with that. And then you're gonna move on to the next meal, which maybe you make chicken tortilla soup or chicken tacos with what's left over if you don't go through the entire roast chicken. So whatever it is, how can we stretch out that item to make sure we use intentionally all of what we have to purchase? Number six is to at least make a plan before you go shopping. Now this may not be a meal plan. If you do that, wonderful. Many of people have told me, many of you have told me it's been great for you, but I still get the comments about meal planning is not for me. That's fine. 
You still need to plan before you go shopping. You know, need to know what you're going to get. This it means looking in your fridge, what do you have? Looking in your pantry, what do you have? Looking in your freezer, what do you have? Looking at the ads or that blog I talked about earlier, what is it that's on sale that I can get? Because if you just go in without a plan, you are going to go ahead and plan and fail and be way past your budget. Number seven is you might have to shop at multiple stores. Now, I want to sp specifically say here the disclaimer of if they're close together. It does not help if you go to multiple stores that are miles away. Not only does it waste your time, you could have food that goes bad because it's a hot day and you have to get something cold at one store because it's closer than this one or vice versa and you just spend too much time driving. So miles on your car and the cost of gas. I'm talking when you have competing stores that are close to each other. For instance, a great tip that actually came from one of my daughter's teachers. She saw the teacher out and she said, oh, well, I'm at this store. I was just at this store. I go and buy this here and I buy this here. And I thought, you know, I knew I liked that teacher because she knows the frugal ways. And what the, the teacher does is she goes to one store and this store first, again, they're right across the street. And in the middle of the store where all the things that are not cold or not fresh, she will purchase those there because at that particular store, they are lower cost. Now, the particular thing about that store is the fruits and vegetables and the meat, it's never really good. It doesn't last long. Uh, it does not necessarily a good price and it's just not good. Okay, so she grabs the things that she has there, she puts it in her trunk, goes over to the next grocery store, which is across the street. At that grocery store, she gets the fresh things, the milk, the frozen, the um, fruits and vegetables, the meat, the things that, yes, that grocery store is more expensive, but she's not losing money because if she'd bought them at the other store, they would have gone bad quicker or not been as high a quality. However, because she's gone to two stores, they are, it's equaling out and saving her a ton of money. I tried it and oddly, I mean, obviously I've been doing this frugal channel for five, over five years and I've had plenty of experience prior to it. I had not thought of doing this because I always thought it would be too much of a hassle. So I tried it. We did it the teacher's way. We went, my daughter and I, and we got the not the middle items that we needed, you know, if there was flour or olive oil or bread, etc., from the one store. And we ended up spending, I think, about $50, $50. We used the little buggy. We were in and out. We got the cart, went across the street, again, used the little buggy, and we spent about another $55 and got the fresh items. Let me tell you, when I normally go to this one store, it's well over more than that, double, because of the cost of those middle items. And I was shocked at how quickly it was. It, it Quick it went. It didn't take too much time at all. So again, long story short with this one, if there are multiple stores near you, it might worth be worth just doing an experiment to see if this process works as well for you as it did for me and obviously does for the teacher who told us about it. Number eight is to reduce food waste as much as possible. And there are so many tips here, but just intentionally remembering that food waste can make up thousands of dollars a year. There are tons of surveys that talk about, you know, depending upon the size of a family, how much actual food waste they go through. And so all of these savings tips that I can give you about how to save money at the grocery store, it's worthless if you end up throwing it away because you make too much, you don't save it, you don't end up eating it because you're like, eh, I don't really like it that much. If you do that, then it's, it's not gonna be worth any of the other tips if you don't try to sit there and focus on reducing the waste of the food. Number nine is to set a food budget. If you create no other budget, at least decide on a number that you're going to spend and stick to at the grocery store. This is the one budget item out of pretty much any other budget item in your budget, in your expenses, that I can think of that can fluctuate so different from week to week, from day to day. A lot of people just end up freestyling it. Let me tell you, if you wanna freestyle it, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up using the credit card and going into debt for your groceries because you're not gonna have enough money to keep covering it. Number 10 is one of my favorite things to do with number nine. And after I create that food budget, 
I kind of create a gap between it. So let's just use round numbers and say that your budget is $100. Well, aim to spend about $90 of that. That way you've got $10 to play with. What I mean by this is just because something is in an ad doesn't mean it's the only thing that's on sale at the store. You could go to the sale at the store and find a fantastic deal on something else. And uh, I've already decided on everything and it's gonna be the budget. I'm gonna be over budget if I get these things. So leave that budget buffer, that gap. And what this looks like for me is if I go to the store and cheeses at my particular store are buy two, get three free. That is a fantastic deal. And it's really easy to cheat to cheese freeze cheese you can cheese freeze you can freeze cheese another time that this happens is soups or canned beans be on a really deep discount like 37 cents or less a can and you can buy up to 10 so I'll buy 10 of them at that time if I know I use them a lot so things such as uh, kidney beans or black beans or chickpeas are fantastic or sometimes even tomato soup can be on sale at that big of a discount but creating that budget gap is going to be able to let you spend on those things when you see the really deep discount items number 11 is to take a calculator with you or you can just pull out your phone and pull out the calculator on your phone and as you go through the store put down in that calculator a rounded up number so let's say an item is $4.37, you're gonna put $5. Of course, you've got to uh, identify tax here, so it's not gonna be specifically that you you know, get to your budget and you're over by the exact amount you rounded up because you do have the taxes. However, round up, no matter the cost, being you know round to the low, the, the nearest number, if it's $3.10, you're still gonna round up to $4. This is also a great thing to do if you have a little helper with you. Little helpers love to help. My daughter right now, her favorite thing is reading. She's obsessed with reading, so she loves to take the grocery list and find the things that we're picking up and mark them off. But I honestly think that I'm gonna go ahead and stick a, a calculator in her hand and see how it goes, because I think she will enjoy it as she's getting more into the math fundamentals now and seeing how it works out in the real world. So it's also an education thing for them. But what happens when you do this is once you've reached that budget, you know, let's again say $100, then you're done. And then you get to the, the checkout and what if you come in at $90 or even less? Great, wonderful. And by the end of the month, if you continue to do that, you've got an extra $40 to $50 in your budget that you can take and spend it somewhere else. Number 12 is to always, always, always sign up for the loyalty program at your grocery store. These are giving way to coupons. You know, back in the day, the paper coupons, you know, the couponing, extreme couponing, basically that's a, it's a dying industry as far as that goes. And the coupons are now being loaded on the app. The sales are through the app. This is easier work for the grocery store because it's just the scanning of the app. But also they will have benefits. These are things that you're buying anyway. I'm not talking about credit card benefits. I'm talking about sh things like if you spend $100, you get 10 cents off of your gas. It's a fantastic deal. I know one time what we'll often do is because the gas station that associates with the store that we use is not always the most convenient to us. So we'll wait until our money kind of stacks up on it and we know we're going past it and we will fill up. I have saved up to over a dollar a gallon by the amount of monthly points I've had stacked up on my card. So always sign up for the loyalty card and see what those perks are. Number 13 is regarding bulk buys. This is one you'll often see as a frequent tip for grocery. Now, I want to say bulk buys are great. Keep in mind that these are things that you want to get that are a longer shelf life or just non-perishable items, consumable items, things like toilet paper, uh, soaps, dishwasher things, maybe some canned goods, things that last longer, pasta, etc. If you have larger families, certainly those big, huge things of fruit and food might be also beneficial for you. But make these bulk buy trips less often. And obviously it's easier to do if it is doing it less often because you're stocking up on things that aren't as perishable. So that's just my tip right there for bulk buys. Do it intentionally and make sure that you're getting the benefit there. 
Number 14 is to do what they did back during the Great Depression, and this was to use fillers. Things like making meatloaf where you would add oats to it to make it go further, you'd have more portions, are things that were used to make fillers to stretch that meat further because the cost of meat was so high. So think about this when you're making other foods, not just meatloaf, but other foods that you could maybe add some oats or potato flakes or something to to stretch them a little bit further. Number 15, counter to number 14, you don't stretch the meat, maybe you eliminate the meat for some meals and you substitute them for non-meat proteins like beans and lentils, things that are still whole foods. Even somebody who absolutely loves meat can understand replacing that portion of a plate every once in a while, maybe a meatless Monday, with some delicious versions of these meals. And honestly, you can do so much with lentils and with beans and with chickpeas that are delicious and great, still great sources of protein and are way less expensive. Number 18, you probably heard when you know somebody's maybe having a baby or they've lost a loved one that neighbors might come together and make freezer meals for them, things that they can easily pull out and make and have a yummy meal. We need to rethink doing this on a more frequent way basis for ourselves. Maybe on the weekend that we have a lot of extra time, we make meals that are really freezer friendly, which are easy to find if you just go on Pinterest and put freezer friendly meals and a ton will pop up and specifically individually portioning these. So enough for a family or individual individual portions. That way it's easy and you only have to pull out one at a time and not a big you know, casserole of it if you know you're not going to eat it because it won't refreeze. So portioning it out and making some freezer meals for yourself, especially if you know the holiday season is coming upon us, it's going to be rush, 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 go, 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 taking some time out to go ahead and do that for yourself. Number 17, this is one quick one that I'm going to remind you, always look at unit prices. And there are some grocery stores may not have unit prices. If you find that, you can go and Google unit price calculator. A lot of times there's a free app that you can download that is a unit price calculator. You just put in the cost and then you put in the unit price or the units, how many ounces the bottle is, etc and it will give it to you. It's a little bit more work than a store that automatically shows it to you. But again, as I talked about earlier with the generic brand, I, my eye doesn't go to the cost of something anymore. It goes to the unit price because I've just seen way too often how the cost of something isn't the true reflection or to, true best deal. It's the unit price where you find that. Number 18, I'm going to say it because I say it a lot and it's just straight meal planning. Now this, <laughs> there's so many people that say, meal planning's not for me. Okay, if you, have you tried it? <laughs> like if, you were, if your budget is really strained to the grocery store, let me tell you, this is one way to make it quick. And it's so simple. All right, let me tell you the quick way to do it. Take a piece of paper out, write down all the meals you make all the time. Yeah, you always find yourself making grilled cheese and tomato soup, making meatloaf and mashed potatoes inside of carrots, a big salad, all the time. Family favorites, write them all down. I don't care if it's only seven or eight. I don't care if it's 50. Now, you can do this on a monthly basis or you can do it on a weekly basis. Whatever's up to you, you can do it every three days. However often you go to the store, maybe the better option. Take your calendar out, take your list out, plug it in. Done. This is going to save you heaps of money, heaps, heaps of money. Number 19 is one of those things that we want to put as much resistance towards procrastination or you know, going out to eat or the excuse more ra rather of I'm too tired. Number 19 helps with this and it is to prep for your meals for the week. And this does not have to take a long time. This is simple as maybe Sunday afternoon. So maybe you're typical, you work Monday through Friday, maybe Sunday afternoon, you take the chicken breast and you chop it up into little cubes and you chop up your bell peppers and your onions for your, you know, for your chicken and, and vegetable rice meal on Tuesday. And then maybe for instance, like me last Sunday, we had black bean burgers on Monday. So I went ahead and took the black beans, put them in the oven, got them a little dried out, chopped up and sauteed my onions and my, um, what do you call those things? Bell peppers, as I just mentioned, put them all together. I patted them out, put them in the fridge so that Monday when I got home, all I had to do was pop them on the grill. Things like this help again, 
put resistance against that excuse. Well, I've already prepped it and it's only gonna take a few minutes. Prepping during that time is going to save. It's gonna save you, you're gonna eat better and you're gonna save money. Number 20 is one that many of you over the years have said has been, well, more recently since it became a more widespread thing, grocery pickup has been the way that you know you're gonna stay on budget with your food because most of the places there's a minimum, maybe it's $35 and there's no fee after that. You put in your what you're going to, uh, what you wanna buy, you can sit there on the app or on the computer and you can plug it all in. You can see everything, check it off your list, make sure you have everything there. You can see the running total. Yes, I'm within budget. I can even still see if something else is on sale. I've got a little bit more room in my budget. So I'm gonna put a few more cans of those soups that were on sale in my cart. And what this does, is again, keeps you out of the store, keeps you from temptation if that's an issue for you, keeps you from smelling those bakery goods or smelling that rotisserie chicken that I continue to talk about that I don't, I no longer eat because chicken and me do not mix very well. And it th keeps you from making those purchases and it has saved so many people money. Now, there are a few, as with anything, caveats. Always check your order to make sure everything is in there that you purchased. Always check your fruits and vegetables and things. Make sure they're good quality. If they are not when you're home, call. My store, when I have done this, and I don't do this all the time, but when I've done this in a pinch, maybe a busy weekend, they will actually credit me for the full amount of the item and I can go and get a brand new one. Number 21 is to stop looking at what's just in front of your face. <laughs> what's in front of your face at, I don't know, the typical average height of an adult human is not always the best price. Oftentimes that is the item that is the most profit for the store. So it's gonna be the, their lowest cost, their highest uh, cost, their lowest cost, your highest cost, the most margin that they make. So you're gonna to wanna to look up and look down because again, very similar items, but you're going to save a ton of money. Just do it, experiment a bit if you have some extra time at the grocery store and just look at the unit price differences between what's at your eye level and what's not. Number 22 is when you're making a meal or when you're planning to do it, this is one thing we love to do is we will make two or three extra portions. So we'll make enough as if there were two or three extra people. And that way my husband and I have additional meals that we can eat through the week for our lunches. And it's not one of these situations where you meal prep by you bake a whole bunch of you know rice, vegetables, and whatever other protein source and you have to eat that six days in a row and nobody really wants to do that. Hey, if you can do that, great, fantastic. But a lot of people have an objection to that. They want a little bit of variety and doing this where the meals that you make a little at a time, you make more than what's needed, then you can actually eat different and more variety through the week so that you don't get burnout on it. Number 23 is to shop the perimeter of the store. Spend as little time as possible in the middle aisles. There obviously are things that you will need in the middle aisles, let's say like cooking oils or spices or pastas, etc. certainly. But stay out of the middle aisles as much as possible. That is where the most processed food and sometimes the more expensive items, sometimes really not good, but cheap items. So I've heard the argument, well, the stuff on the perimeter is really is much more expensive. It's fresh foods, wholer, more nutritional foods for you. And yes, they might be more expensive, not always, but hear me out on this. When you fill yourself up with processed salt, sugar, foods that you find in these middle, middle aisles, I'm talking about boxed, prepackaged meals, what it actually does is, sure, you might save money on that item, but it actually makes your body hungrier because they are empty calories. Therefore, you end up eating more, therefore spending more, so you actually are not coming out ahead in the end. This is why I say to shop the perimeter of the store. Number 24 is to create a zone in your fridge for your leftovers. This is because otherwise the leftovers are gonna get pushed by something else to the back of the fridge where they're gonna grow 
all kinds of fun stuff that's you know not meant to be eaten because you're going to forget about them and then the whole point of making extra is a moot point because you now don't eat it because you don't know it's there <laughs> if you have designated a specific area in your fridge it's a lot harder to say, oh, we don't have anything to eat. Oh, I'm just gonna, you know, pull something out of the freezer. Oh, just, can you just pick up some takeout on your way home? We don't have anything. You open it up and go, oh, yep, all right, there it is. It's in its zone. Create that zone so it doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Number 25 goes along with number 24, and it's to pick one day a week where you clean out this zone. That's where everybody knows that this day, so for, for instance, you subscribe to a uh, method of Taco Tuesdays, you know, uh, Salad Wednesdays, I don't know, uh, Chicken Dish Thursdays, and on Fridays, maybe you call it Clean Out Zone Friday. You eat all the leftovers. Doesn't matter what's in there, that's what we have to eat. We have to clean it out. Pull it out, see if you can make something unique out of it, or you know what, put it all together. I am not one who subscribes to the fact that you can't eat peas and pizza. I don't get it. I don't care, eat it. It's, they're both delicious on their own and certainly together. Whoever said they don't go together, I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it anyway. Clean out that zone. This is best to do the night before you go to the store. So for instance, for us, it might be on Friday night because we go to the store on the weekend. That way you can clear that zone out. You can see clearly what's in the fridge at that point. So if you've got some extra items left over, maybe there still are some few carrot, a few carrots, you can more easily see what is available when you're doing the planning for your week. The next four are rapid fire. These are quick, but they're smart and they're gonna help. Number 26 is to always check your receipt. You don't, may not do it in the store if there's a long line of people and the cashier looks like she's about to pull her hair out. Go out to the car, go over the receipt, see if there's any duplicates, see if the price changed, it, some, anything that pops out at you. If something huge pops out at you, it could be a huge red flag. That way, there's no resistance. Again, you're gonna go right back into the store and get that cleared up at the customer service checkout. Number 27 is to organize your pantry. One of my favorite ways to do this with cans because we have pull out, um, we have open the pantry and you pull out the drawers so it's not a closet and you walk out, walk in and there are shelves. So what we do with our cans is we write the expiration date and we write what it is. So short form. So green beans is GB, chickpeas is chickpea. Whatever it is on top of the can, that way you know and you can easily find it. This is a world of difference for me if I'm getting ready to make bean balls, which is like a version of meatballs uh, with my kidney beans. I can open up my pantry and say, oh, yeah, I'm good. I see two that say kidney. Number 28 is to grate your own cheese. The thing about cheese is it's a lot less expensive if you buy it by the block versus shredding it or buying it pre-shredded. Also, what you don't realize is there's like a film that they put over pre-shredded cheese so that it doesn't clump together with the moisture, so it kind of keeps the moisture in, which doesn't always work well with your recipes if your recipe needs the moisture from the cheese in order to help bring moisture to the dish. So if you choose to buy pre-shredded cheese, the dish could be a little dry or not the way you expected it based on the recipe. So that is why buying the, the cheese in the block, quickly taking a bit of time. You could also use this as one of the items that you prep for the week. You're having pizzas on Wednesday. So on Saturday, everybody sits and shreds the cheese for that Wednesday meal, put it in a container and you'll have it ready. Number 29 is the last one and it's to pack snacks. A lot of people talk about packing their lunch or maybe even packing their breakfast, but also pack snacks. I am a big snacker. I've been a snacker since I had my daughter, meaning I don't eat big meals. I snack more often because when you're pregnant with a 9.4 pound baby uh, and you're only five foot four, there's not a lot of room for your stomach, so you have to eat small meals often. So I got kind of used to it, so I eat small meals often. So packing snacks is just something that's been a smart thing for me rather than stopping at a gas station or a drive through to get something really quick because I'm hungry. I hope you enjoyed this video. I most certainly enjoyed putting it together for you because I think, again, this is a significant budget item that you can really save a lot of money if you put some thought and some intentionality behind it. I would love to know if you all have any fantastic money-saving tips when it comes to food. 
put those down in the comments below. As I've mentioned throughout this video, I've learned so much from you and I want to continue to learn from you. So please share your knowledge with not just me, but everybody else who loves to dive into the comments of these videos. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's free. All you have to do is be logged into YouTube with your email and all it does is help you to see when my next video comes up. So click on that subscribe button before you go. Thank you so much as always and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead.